Tighter Insider Preseason Camp is sponsored by The Locker Room. Hello again, everybody, and welcome into our third Tighter Insider Fall Camp Alabama update brought to you by The Locker Room, home of the original elephant wear. I'm Gary Harris, joined by Rodney Orr. Today, noteworthy simply because yesterday was a split squad practice. Today, for the first time, we got to see the entire team out on the field at one time. And let's hit on a couple of groups that we didn't mention yesterday, and particularly since they were all out there together. Let's start with the running backs. Obviously, you've got Yeldon, Henry, and Drake, but Jones and Tenpenny out there as well. This is another group that has a lot of different guys. A lot of talent, but you know, probably only going to play three of those guys. How do you see that rotation breaking down? Well, obviously, T.J. Yeldon's a guy that's rushed for a thousand yards the past two years, and you know, Gary, I know there's been some talk about maybe he might lose his job. Very, very doubtful about that. I mean, he's a dependable running back. We know what he can do, and certainly, I think he's going to be your main guy. And then, you know, the question is, you know, how are you going to play the rotation out with Henry and Drake? And it will probably depend on the situation. I mean, what do you need in that particular situation? But you know, Drake and Henry certainly great backs in their own right. Drake brings that, you know, that speed. He brings something different, that speed, speed, big playability. You know, Henry can make those big plays, but he can also run with power. We've seen in the past, you think you've got a lot of depth at running back, then one or two guys go down, and you just can't have enough running backs, particularly in this offense. Wide receiving core, a lot of numbers there. Let's start, of course, with Cooper, Jones, and White. But there are a lot of guys that can contribute. We may see four or five of them on the field at one time. And let's don't forget the tight ends with Howard and Vogler as well. Another area with a lot of playmakers. Well, I thought a couple of years ago that that was the best wide receiver core that Alabama had had that I had ever, since I'd been following it. You know, this year, Gary, it's even better when you look at it, uh, I think. Uh, you know, obviously, Amari Cooper is uh, maybe the best co receiver in the country. DeAndre White's great speed. Christian Jones, I mean, he's a jitterbug. He's a guy that can make a lot of big plays, not only in the kicking game, but also from that slot receiver position. And, uh, you know, some of the younger guys to watch out for. Robert Foster, the highly heralded player. We know what he can do based on the A-Day game, and he was redshirted last year. Cameron Sims is a young freshman who came in the spring, looked really good. They've got so many guys. Chris Black is a guy that made some things happen last year in some limited opportunities. O.J. Howard at the tight end position. Brian Bogler's black back for his senior year. Seems to have a, a different attitude, Gary. He said he's kind of taken on more of a leadership role. He's done things in the offseason in terms of his work ethic that he had not done before. So, again, I think he's kind of taken up that leadership role. Ty Flanoy Smith, a, a guy who transferred in as a junior college player. He's another guy to really keep an eye on. Could become a very valuable uh, player in this offense. He's a guy that has some experience, played at Georgia, and then left that program and is now here. So, you know, it's going to be really interesting to watch how Lane Kiffin uses the tight ends. He's noted for doing that. And while we're talking about running backs, we can't forget about Jostin Fowler. Right. I mean, he's a guy that's a big power back, a guy that can, you know, play that one back spot, but he can also line up in front of a TJ Yeldon, Derek Henry, whoever it might be at the tailback position, and he can make some things happen as a blocker or as a receiver. And two young guys, Al T. Tenpenny and Tyron Jones, uh, they're, they're guys probably for the future and finally our first opportunity to see all five scholarship quarterbacks together Bateman Sims Coker Morris and Cornwell yeah and and I think when you look at that obviously um, everybody knows it is probably Coker and Sims are the two guys kind of battling for that spot and you know we've talked about it Gary and I know you agree with what I say or what I think and that would be that you know if Coker wins the job I still think that Blake Sims will have a role because he can bring, bring some things different to the table you know so I think he can do some things and may get a particular role or specific role in games and you know you have Cooper Bateman a guy that really made a lot of progress in the spring last year as, as a red shirt freshman and you know he's coming into this year um, you know with some more experience in terms of the practice so I think he's really really grown over the past year the other two guys uh, uh, that you mentioned Morris is is a guy that uh, you know he's kind of you know, he hasn't gotten many reps, as many reps maybe over the last, maybe over spring and early this fall camp, but he's a guy that could help as a punter, possibly. And then also uh, David Cornwell, the freshman who we talked about last night. That's our update for Saturday, August 2nd. Sunday is Fan Day and Media Day. Stay tuned to TiderInsider.com and WVUATV.com for more Tider Insider fall camp updates brought to you by The Locker Room. Tider Insider Preseason Camp is sponsored by The Locker Room.